Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is the second video in the Complete Guide to Jupiter series. Today we are going to cover the basics of working inside of a notebook. So to create a new notebook, I'm going to come here to New. And under here I have a list of all the different kernels. Now you might have a lot of things here, especially if you're using an online platform like SageMaker or a notebook on something like Paperspace. But here in Anaconda I only have the Python 3 option that I've added so far. So I'm going to click on that to create a new notebook. And in this text area, it's called a cell. You can type in things as you would in a normal Python interpreter. For example, print 2 plus 2. And then I'm going to click on run the cell. And it prints out 4. Now something special about Jupyter is you actually don't need to hit print here to print it out. It will automatically print out the last statement. So it prints out 4 or 3 minus 1, run, etc. Now you've noticed that when I hit run, it automatically creates a cell right after the one I just executed, but I don't have to come up here and hit run every time. There are a lot of shortcuts in Jupyter Notebooks. If you come up here to help, you can see the whole list of keyboard shortcuts, but I'm just going to go over a few of them as we go. So to run cells, you can hit shift and enter and it runs a cell and goes to the next cell. And if I hit shift enter again, it will keep going to the next cell. Now, if I'm in a cell such as the top one here and I hit shift enter, it will just go to the next cell. But if I'm at the last cell, it's going to create a new one after. Now, if you want to create one in between these two cells, for example, run this cell and create another one after it, you would do Alt or Option and hit Enter, and that will create a new cell directly after the cell that you just executed, even if it's not at the end. Now you can treat a Jupyter Notebook as a whole Python program, so variables and functions that you wrote earlier on you will have access to later. For example, if I write a function here, add and then return x plus y and then I'll run that. Now I have access to the add function later on so I can come anywhere else in the document and I can say add to 3 and then I can run that and it prints out the answer. Now you can also do imports as you normally would in a Python program so I can say import numpy as np run that and it will import it for me so if I want to come here and say np dot a range is 12, that will make a NumPy array for me. Now if you notice here, as I'm running cells and navigating around, there's two different modes. So here when I'm editing, you can kind of see that there's uh, this green border around the cell. And there's also this little edit mode icon up here. But when now I click down on this cell, instead of inside the cell, it turns blue and there's no edit icon. So when it's blue, it's called command mode and it changes the keyboard shortcuts that you can execute. For example, if I'm in here and I type, it's just going to type the characters. But now if I hit escape and you can see from the blue, I'm in command mode. Now I can hit M and it turns this cell to markdown. See where it changed to markdown? from code execution. And now obviously I can write markdown in here. And now when I hit shift enter, it turns into a header instead of executing it as Python code. Now I'll hit enter to enter edit mode. Now there are also some cool ways that I can get help when I'm using methods from libraries inside of Jupyter. So let's take this NumPy example. If I wanna see inside the a range method, I can hit shift and tab and it gives me the doc string. So I can look into what arguments to pass to the method. I can also put a question mark at the beginning and say mp.arrange and then it will give me a printed out longer form of the doc string here. And then I can hit escape to exit the window. Let's talk about some other useful shortcuts that Jupyter has. These ones are called magic commands. You can access the list of magic commands by typing in ls magic 
shift enter and it talks about all the different built-in magic commands libraries like matplotlib and other ones that you will commonly use have these commands as kind of shortcut helpers to solve common problems that you might have. So let's see how one of these work. Now you'll notice this one has 1% sign and you can see this is for line magics, but if I want it for the whole cell, then I'll use 2% signs. So here I'm going to use one, let's see if it's listed here, yeah, time. So I'm going to use double percent, oops, time and then I'll paste in a function that I already wrote. So what this does, by putting it at the start of the cell, it will actually print out how long the execution of this cell takes. So to execute, I'll hit Shift Enter again, and you'll notice while it's executing, there's a star here, and also this circle is filled in up here. And now the circle's not filled in, and it gives us a number for the order of execution here once it's done. And you can see it took it took a total of about six and a half seconds. So this is just one more thing that I want to cover. So let's say I didn't have a library installed or I needed to run some other kind of bash command. I'm going to just create a new cell here and use a bang. And if I want to see my installed modules, I can say conda list and it will show me all of the packages I have installed. Now, if I want to install one, I can just do what I would normally do here and say, Oops, pip install TensorFlow or whatever else. This is already installed, but that's how you do it. And there's also a magic command if you want the whole cell instead of just this one line to be a bash script, then you can put percent percent bash and then write whatever you would want for the whole cell. It's giving me an error because I didn't write anything there, but I could do the same thing and say, Oops. Let's say pip install pandas, and that way I could use as many lines as I wanted. Now before I exit this, I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to just call it Jupyter Tutorial 2. Hit enter. It renames it for me, and then I will close this notebook. Actually, I'll hit stay on page, and it says my last checkpoint is 26 minutes ago, so obviously I haven't saved. I'll hit Command S to save. Now it's saved. And I believe after the first save, it should be auto saving now, but I'm not sure about that. So anyways, I'm going to close the notebook. And now I see my tutorial is here. Now notice that it is green, which means it's still running even though I closed it. So if I go to running notebooks, I can see the code tutorials, Jupyter tutorial is still running. So to stop it from running, I actually have to come and shut down every single notebook individually. So I'm going to hit shut down and now it's shut down. And if I come over to files, then it's no longer green, meaning it's actually shut down. So thanks for watching. Join me in the next one for a few more advanced topics about Jupyter notebooks and also a look at the Jupyter lab interface.